Hey everybody, welcome back to the 750 Super Duty Build. In this episode, I'm going to start with building my seat frames. And of course, it'll be a little while until I need the seats, but I just found out that there's a, a really good aircraft upholstery shop only about 10 miles from my house here in Michigan. My neighbor with a Baron had his full interior done. Len, who you have met with the Velocity, had his interior done by this place which I will show you on the next Velocity update, whenever that will be. So I figured since it's local and I can go and kind of pick out the exact leathers that I want and stuff like that, I'll get my seats made here in Michigan. So, but it takes a couple months to do. So I want to get my seat frames done uh, and I want to get the steel parts powder coated so that I can take a seat frame to this shop and then have him build me the seat cushions. I always like when it's time to take parts off of the shelf and open them up because for one, it's fun to open up parts and take a look at them. And two, it starts clearing parts off of the shelf, making more room. Now these are the seat bottom pans here. And as you can see, they have a blue plastic layer that has to be removed. All I'm doing here is test fitting this piece into the fuselage. I'll talk about this on a future video, but I'm not going to use the sliding seat rails that come with the kit. The holes in these steel pieces have to be transferred to the sides of the seat pan. So I'm using that piece of wood just to line up the back end and marking the first hole on the aluminum. With that first hole marked on the aluminum, I drill that out, open it up to the right size so I can put these, this uh, black Clico in here. And that holds the steel bracket in place. Once that's held in place with the first Clico, I can drill some of the other holes and put Clicos in there to hold it in the correct position. But what you'll see here in a second is the bottom holes, I can't use my drill because the drill itself hits the bottom of the seat pan. So I have a 90 degree drill that I use and that lets me get to these bottom holes. I wanted to point out something about these seats and I mentioned this with my cruiser because these seats are the exact same as the, the cruiser but I don't remember if I was filming videos then or if it's just in my builder's log but the way these seats work is obviously this is a seat bottom and this is a seat back and it rotates forward like this and you can see I don't have that bracket on but you can see on this side here there's a pin that's welded to here that goes through the hole here and that's what lets it rotate and you can see this little steel welded piece there when the seat back is all the way back this rests against here and that's what keeps the seat back from going all the way back. But you will notice in the plans, this steel piece here rivets to the seat bottom with all steel A5 rivets. And you'll notice that there's one, two, three rivets that go back here. Well, if you use steel rivets there or anything but flush rivets, you'll notice that when you rotate your seat like this, that this will rub on those three rivets every time you move your seat. And if you have this primed or painted or powder coated, you're gonna start cutting into that coating and then maybe even damaging the, the steel here the more you rotate your seats. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did on my cruiser. These three holes here, I'm going to drill out to 3 16 and I'm going to countersink and then I'm going to use these screws here, um, I got these from the guard, they're from the F-16, we use a thousand of these on the canopy and various other things. It does take a special uh, bit here, it's not a regular Phillips, but I know my camera's probably not going to focus on that when I zoom in. But anyway, it's just a, a, a small screw that's made to, to go into a counter sink hole. And so I'll drill these out and I'll make these three here, I'll put a, a bolt and a nut on it instead of a rivet. And in that way, the bolt head will be flush with the steel, 
So every time that that seat back moves like this, it won't be rubbing on anything there. Here is the first seat pan done. And now I'll do this one here. It didn't take long to do, maybe 15 minutes or so. So I'll get this one drilled here and then I can take all the steel parts to the powder coater. Now moving on from the seats into the fuselage, I'm doing again the same thing I did with my cruiser. This center armrest part here, I'm not riveting the tops on. What I, what I did on my cruiser and what I'm doing here is I'm mounting nut plates on these pieces so that I can remove the top parts. If I ever need to get in there to check wiring or um, lube the torque tube or whatever, you know, I'd rather just be able to get in there especially once a year for inspections and stuff instead of having that top piece riveted on and all i'm doing here is drilling out the holes for the nut plate i've showed you in other videos how to do this it's pretty easy um, i know the nut plate goes on the inside but it's mounted here on the outside for now just to drill the holes once all the holes are drilled for the nut plates i just use this countersinking tool to countersink the holes I always check the fit with a rivet, and if I need to go a little bit deeper, sometimes I just do it with a deburring tool. I can do it by hand and that works just as well. Moving on from the seats, today's goal is to join these two halves together. So Gordon and Brian will come over a little bit later to help me with that. In the meantime, I want to start making some room in my hangar slash workshop. So I have this scaffolding here because I need to replace that ceiling fan and I need to raise it up a little bit because the Super Duty tail will hit that. In fact, it's only a few inches above the tail of the cruiser, but I haven't gotten around to ordering a new fan yet. Once I do that, I can use the scaffolding and then get rid of the scaffolding. This summer, I'll finish putting the pink foam on the top of the door. I'll replace all that white with the pink. I'll be able to get rid of that stack. Once that stack is gone, obviously the wing I can move somewhere else. And then this crate here, which has been very handy for painting parts. This is the crate that the Super Duty kit arrived in. And I've been using it as a makeshift paint booth. You can see all the paint or primer on it, and you can see all the primer down on the bottom. Uh, so all of the little parts for the wings and the fuselage and stuff like that, I would bring over here and kind of hold them down in here and prime them with a can of primer. And it kept all of the overspray in here instead of getting on the floor or my airplane. So, but I think I'm done with this now because most of the little small parts are primed. Uh, so I think I can get rid of this and make some room. And the other reason I want to get rid of it is because once this fuselage is joined together with the front half, I want to get it on its gear, finish riveting the top, and then I want to get this uh, painted, especially the inside. Maybe not the outside just yet, but I do want to get the whole inside primed and painted so I can start working on putting in the rudder pedals and the controls and the instrument panel and all that kind of stuff. And then what I want to do when that's done is I want to install the tail. I want to make the tail fairings like I did for the cruiser. And then once that's done, I can paint the fuselage. And to do that, if you guys are familiar or if you've watched the videos on the cruiser, you might remember that from on the door, this post here, I think it's that one. Yeah, this one here, just to the left of those two windows, that was where the, the curtain for the paint booth came out here, all the way back here. And then I still have this cable run across here 
I just have some of these cheap flags on there because they look cool. But that was the other cable that I ran for to hang the tarp for the paint booth. So basically from, this, from that cable forward to the hangar door was my paint booth. So if I can get rid of all that, get rid of that, I can move the fuselage in here and get that painted green and white uh, as soon as it's ready. So until Gordon and Brian come over to help me with this later today, I think right now I'm going to work on disassembling that crate. Well, the crate is completely taken apart and I've got a nice little pile of wood here, but I'm not sure it was worth doing. I really didn't free up any space. All I did was move other stuff back over to where the crate was. Well, I don't see any reason to leave the rest of this airplane unriveted. So I'm starting to rivet the, the back end here and I'm also going to finish riveting the top skin and the top long rons to finish up the back half of the fuselage so that, I can, so that it can be joined to the front half. All right, I have all these rivets in and on the bottom. And you'll notice I didn't rivet these ones yet. And that is because that is where this steel piece here, which is the mount for the tail skid, uh, that will go on here and get riveted here. I'm going to put this on after the airplane is painted. So, uh, you know, it's a good idea if, if you know something goes on here uh, and you don't want to put rivets in, either put a line on it or put an X through the hole or something like that. That's what I do, just to remind me not to put rivets in those holes yet. Well, Brian, Gordon, and I started to join the fuselage house when Brian said that I forgot to turn the camera on, so we missed just putting it together. There's Gordon over there. He's supposed to be holding the front, but... Knowing Gordon, he's probably just standing there with his hands in his pocket like he usually does. So those two guys held the fuselage front half in place while I just went around and put all the Clecos in. Well, here it is joined together. It now looks like an airplane. Now with the two halves together, I can start putting in all the pieces here, these pieces here, the supports that go down the side, Everything on the inside here, I can start uh, clicoing place, and then I think it's all ready to rivet. Well, I have most of the pieces put together now and really a credit to Zenith of how nicely all of these pieces fit. All of the holes line up nicely. It's just amazing. I know this thing is all designed on a computer, uh, but it's just still really neat how all those holes line up, those line up. Just, I mean, everything lines up. All the holes fit nice, the pieces fit together. Uh, really nice, so that's cool. There's obviously another piece here that I'm not putting on just yet because I still have to add the bell crank that'll get bolted to this white piece. It's right behind that, but there's a, there's a bell crank there for the aileron push rods. Uh, I hope I have to hook up the flat motor yet. Um, and then the, when I put that bell crank on, there's push rods that go all the way up to here. And those have to be inserted before you put on these, these other aluminum pieces or you'll never get the rods in there. So, and those are the, the push rods that I painted. Uh, I think I showed you that on the last video or maybe the video before that. Uh, but anyway, I can put those, the bell cranks on, put the push rods in, put in the other aluminum pieces, 
And then I think I can go through and just rivet everything. Everything's ready. It's all Clico together. It's just all ready to rivet all the way back to the back of the fuselage. And then even the top here, I think is ready to rivet. I have this line drawn on here <laughs> and I don't remember why that's here. If there was a reason not to rivet that yet, or if I had to drill the holes out or something, I, I, I forget why that I drew that line there. I'll have to look back in the plans, but uh, you know, all this is ready to rivet together. These are probably ready to rivet on, but like I said, I still have to, I wanna prime the, the back pieces of this that, that go up against the fuselage. So I'll take them off and prime that yet. Um, yeah, and then, uh, so I think, just thinking out loud here for the next couple steps, once all this is riveted and done, I believe the next thing to do is to build the firewall. And once the firewall is on there, or I can probably put this cage on here too and see how that fits. After that, it's on to the landing gear. And then uh, I may wanna get an order in for an engine here pretty soon. Looking awesome.